TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. By the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, don't forget, if you do want to catch a live and you miss a live and you want to rewatch old lives, just go to twitch.com and enter the username at the bottom of the screen right there. You see it? I'm looking at it. Um, don't forget, we also got Patreon. We post five days a week and we got merch. You get me? Uh, merch, it's more for Twitch. I mean, not Twitch. It's more for... Uh, What's the TikTok people over on TikTok? Because y'all, 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 I already know how y'all be moving, man. Listen, but I let y'all know I got it. Anyway, anyway, uh, this is my warning, YouTube. Read and read it and weep. This is Lad Bible TV. Mafia boss and London gangster reveal their most violent crimes. Mmm. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. Bobby, Michael Francis, how are you? Bobby, nice to meet you. Pleased to meet Pleasure. you, Michael. And we watch both of their black Bibles, right? It's a, it's a privilege for me because I've heard so many great things about you, Bobby, Thank really. You. Well, I'm not being funny. That goes two ways, doesn't it? It's two-way traffic because I've heard great things about you. I don't wish to embarrass you, but as soon as people see you, they go mafia, you know? As soon as people see me, they go the underworld. They call me a gangster. I go, I'm not a gangster, yeah. you know? Never had been a gangster. Gangsters, these people... They show offs, they're loud. They're, I don't do that. I'm polite and I'm a businessman whose business is crime, you know? Well, you're, you're a racketeer. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I like to consider myself a person who makes money through illegal or dishonest activity. More of a racketeer than a oh, gangster. Okay, it just sounds better. Facts. What was it like when, when you was a kid and you was born? Because your family, your father was in, mixed up in organised crime, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. So what was it like? Did, did you feel you had to go that way? Yeah, was it? My dad was kind of like the John Gotti of his mm. day. Yeah. Very high profile, mm. always under investigation, mm. major target mm. of law enforcement. Mm. Back in my day, when uh, you were under investigation, mm. they wanted you to know about it. Mm. Mm. And for a period of, you know, 10, 12 years, I'm growing up. Mm. We've got agents around us mm. all the time, sitting outside our house 24 hours a day. Mm. We get in a the car, they follow us. Mm. I go to a ball game, they follow us. So I grew up hating the police. Mm. I hated them. Mm. <clears throat> I hated the government, because mm. I always looked at them as harassing my mm. family, mm. right? And then they indict them on some phony case mm. uh, for masterminding a nationwide mm. string of bank robbers. Mm. He supposedly ordered the bank mm. robbers. He goes to trial, gets convicted, they give him 50 years. <laughs> I was eight. Damn. Oh my God. 18 years old, 19, I was devastated because mm. you figure 50 years, he's mm. never coming out mm. alive. Mm. He was 50 mm. when he went in. So at the time, Joe Colombo mm. was very mm. close to our family. Oh my God, are we going to do that the whole time? Mm. Mm. My mm. dad was mm. the underboss. Mm. And he kind of takes me under his wing and I'm meeting a lot of my dad's mm. friends. So I go see my dad in prison. I said, Dad, bank robbery? Mm. And Bobby, I'll never forget, mm. he looked me in the eye. And he never lied to mm. me. Mm. And he said, son, I'm innocent. Yeah, I yeah. was framed on this case. Mm. He said, and we have to find these witnesses, get them to yeah. reverse yeah. their testimony, mm. or, or mm. I'm gonna mm. die in here. Yeah. That's how it be though, when you a boss and you moving real, 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 real smart, and they can't get you for the crimes they wanna get you, they might fabricate something. Especially back in those days. More so back in those days. So I don't go to school anymore, mm. and I'm on the street now, and I'm trying to help my father. And that's, that's how right. I got involved, really. Michael, that's why, why I feel for you, because I know what you're talking about. We come from a poor area, and that was all straight people in my family. I worked in a shipping office doing um, invoices and that sort of thing. Go for a park, two coppers go in the park. They've gone out of there. They've come back with a cutthroat razor threw it on the ground and said, we just see you, throw it out your pocket, right? Nick me, 
they go down to the police station and they don't My mum and dad, they are working normal people. They're broken hearted. Their son's been arrested. What's that? He don't do that. Come up, I said to my dad, I said, they, they fitted me up. He went, what? I said, they framed me. I said, I didn't have it. And he went, well, policemen don't tell lies. I mean, he was that naive. That's, went, that's crazy. Policemen, <laughs> yeah. no, he But wasn't. why would they do that to you? I don't, they had nothing to do. They was looking for a conviction for the end of the month or something. Right, he was that naive. You take a bill, guilty, you get, like in, in your country, a dollar fine, right? If you plead a not guilty, then you're going to jail, the young, young offenders jail, right? My mum's crying, I don't want to hurt my family, Michael. So I go guilty on it. Go back to work the next day, I'm sacked. Because you can't work in a shipping office with invoices if you've got a criminal record. But there was no criminality in my mind at that time. As soon as they'd done that, then I was hearing people doing armed robberies and all that. And someone said, do you want to come on? Bro, that's insane. He got... Bro, he, he got finessed into the world of criminality. He got... He got finessed by the police into a vicious cycle of criminology. Criminality. That's... No, I'm robbery. Yeah, I'll have some of that. Get the sword off, snuck out the van, nothing in it. Right, so I'll get a senior detention centre, they were the youngest person, youngest person in Great Britain, for people with a sword off at the age of 16 and stick out a pot. So I go there. Brutal place, Michael, by this time. And now I'm, the criminal mind's coming in, cultured. I've met other criminals in there, and they're telling me how they do it, so I'm learning off of them. Prison is the best, the university of crime, it's the best place to learn stuff. That's what I be saying. Becoming a gangster. If you betray your brothers, you're burning. That's true while you banging, but just remember, there is no honor amongst thieves. So the moment they get a, a second to get higher than you on the ranking system, they're going to do it. They're going to backdoor you. And, and like nowadays, they'll backdoor you, your own people. When I visited my father and he said to me... It's vicious out here. That's why, you, you know what I'm saying? 2024, you really don't even want to partake. You know what I'm saying? You back People that say they love you, family members, y'all in it together, like they backdooring you. It's tough. Me, son, if you're going to... When I visited my father and he mm. said to me, son, if you're going to be on the street, mm. I want you on the street the right way. Yeah. And this is in the visiting room of Leavenworth. He said, if you ever had to kill anybody, could you do it? Mm. I thought Federal I was 19 years Kansas. old. I said, under the right conditions, yeah, I yeah. could do it. Dad. Yeah. And he said to me, that's the right answer. Yeah. And he said, go home. Somebody's going to be in touch with mm. you. Just do what you're told. Two mm. weeks later, a captain picked me up, took me to see the boss. Mm. And I sat with him. And he said, a leadership position in the mafia. Michael, I got a message from your father. You want mm. to become a member of our mm. life. Is that true? Mm. I said, yes. He said, here's the deal. Mm. And this is how serious mm. it was. Mm. From now on, 24 hours a day, mm. seven days a mm. week, you're on call to serve this family. Mm. That means if your mother is sick mm. and she's dying mm. and you're at her bedside, mm. we call you to service, mm. you leave your mother, you mm. come and serve us. Mm. From now on, we're number one in your life mm. before anything and everything. Mm. When and if we feel you deserve this privilege, this mm. honor to become mm. a member, we'll mm. let you know. I was 20, 21 years old. Mm. I'm in kind of like a recruit period where I had yep. to do anything and everything I'm told yeah. to do to prove myself mm. worthy. That lasted like two and a half years. Mm. And again, discipline, authority, you know. Bro went through a whole college, you know what I'm saying? He got a degree in this. Two and a half years is crazy. Drive the boss to a meeting, mm. sit in the car three mm. hours. God mm. forbid you leave. Mm. He comes out, you go to the restroom, mm. whatever, then you're not mm. there, you're in a lot of trouble. Mm. I know I did that once, I made that mistake. <laughs> You had a meeting at 8 o'clock, mm. you weren't there at 7.30. Mm. can never be late mm. in that mm. life. You always had to, mm. I don't care if there's an earthquake, mm. you had to figure out how to be on yeah. time. Yeah. Go there the night before, mm. you know? So, two and a half years later, I'm called into a room with five mm. other gentlemen, and that night we all took an oath mm. and became made members right. of the Palumbo family. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> we walked into a room individually. The boss is seated to like the head of a horseshoe configuration. The underboss, consigliere to his left and right. All the captains, Capo de James, were alongside of them. We had about 15 in our family at that point. I walked down the aisle, stood in front of the boss, I held out. I don't think it's... 
Is he supposed to be talking about this? My hand right near. Mm. Cut my finger. Mm. Some blood dropped on the floor. Mm. I cupped my hands, took mm. a picture of a saint, the mm. Catholic uh, altar card, yeah, yeah. lit it a flame. It didn't mm. hurt, it burned mm. quickly, it was just symbolic. Mm. And he said, tonight, Michael Francis, you mm. are born again into mm. a new life, into mm. Cosa Nostra. Mm. Violate what you know about mm. this life, betray your Italian name for the mafia meaning our thing. Your brothers, mm. and you'll die and burn in hell like mm. the saint is burning mm. in your hands. Do mm. you accept? Yes, I do. Mm. And that's the oath. Mm. Yeah, I'll tell you, Michael, it's, it's you know, the ritual thing, we never did. Mm -hmm. The other thing, you, there's my heart, there's my hand. Yeah. That's the only ritual we had. There's my heart, there's my hand. In other words, I'll never betray you. I'll never hurt your family. You know, you don't hurt mine. And, and there was them rules, and you don't cause trouble in someone else's patch and ruin their business, because it caused gang warfare, right? And people got shot, and people mm -hmm. got killed. And, because you had bosses of, un they called it the underworld, but bosses, that was running firms, you know? I and mean, as kids, we look up to them, you know, because we just, if you like, teething at it. I mean, we're doing, you know, maybe cutting each other up or eating each other with hatchets or shooting each other. But these guys, they had the big car. They was the real deal. And you, and someone said to me, they went, would you like to be like him? You know, and this guy's name was Billy Hill at the time. Billy Hill, we have seen some movies with him in there. 1930s London criminal known as the King of Soho. Linked to smuggling and extreme violence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've seen a documentary, not a movie. Recently, like last month, maybe up there. I said, no. They went, you wouldn't. I went, no. I want to be better. You violate another yeah. man's wife, daughter, yeah. sister, yeah. mother, yeah. Yeah. you're dead. Yeah. You deal with drugs, yeah. you're dead. Yeah. You hit another made man, yeah. you're dead. So. We're all told the same thing. Mm. So we think at that time, okay, if we understand, if we break mm. the rules, we yeah. can pay for it with yeah. our life. So we justify mm. it, mm. you know? I mean, I had a guy who was close to me like my brother. Yeah. I love the guy. Unknowingly, he's, have, he's married. Mm. I baptized his son. Mm. He's having an affair with my sister. Bloody hell, man. You can't Bloody survive that. You know, unfortunately, I, I, I tell you what happened. That's cold-blooded, boy. That's too. That's risky in mafia business. That's risky in regular any old life. That's crazy when you're trying to do that to somebody like him. He's have. He's married. Mm. I baptized his son. Mm. He's having an affair with my sister. Bloody hell, man! What you say to your sister, though? You can't Bell. survive that. You know, unfortunately, I, I I tell you what happened to me. My first experience, and I had mm. many, unfortunately. Mm. There was a guy that. Uh, it was a Jewish guy, mm. actually. Mm but very close to my dad, yeah. very close yeah. to me, right? And when my father went away, he was mm. kind of like a second father yeah. to me. Please. He made a mistake, I don't want to get into all the mm. details. And, and this was the first eye-opening mm. experience mm. I had. And he got it beat up, I mean, mm. really bad, devastated. I mean, they, they, just, mm. they just mutilated his mm. body. Mm. So I went to the funeral and his sister mm. came up to me and she said, Michael, look what these animals, mm. and it happened within the life, mm. look what these animals did to my brother. Mm. It was a closed coffin, she opens the coffin, and I'll be honest with you, mm. Bobby, I almost got sick, he mm. was unrecognizable. Mm. That's when I got a bird's eye view mm. of what the life was really all about. Mm. And then I'm at a, you know, a rally and Joe mm. Colombo was my mm. boss who mm. I loved, mm. gets shot, I'm 12 steps mm. away from mm. him. Mm. He died, he died mm. eventually from the wounds. Like, even in my own life, like, allegedly I've shot quite a few people, and allegedely um, I've shot them. But no, that word right there is tough, allegedly. As I said to people, what I realise now, Michael, what, I didn't care then. It was business, it was just part of the business. They come in one day, old Frank, because a lot of my people are Irish, and Frank come in, he said, Duh. This Chinese geezers want to see you. There's something about triads. Now, I've done jail with the triads and the, uh, and the tongue and all that. I knew that was nasty bits of work, you know? And I went, this is heavy. I said, get the guns out. I said, if they want to meet, we're going to meet these, but we meet them off the manor in a nice quiet place, because if it does go off, I don't want cameras going everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, to be honest with you, yeah, I had a, because it's known, I had a sawn off under my coat. And they're expecting, when they all say about Bobby Cummings, they're expecting a guy like, a doorman. Yeah. I mean, I'm five foot six, more fat on a greasy chip, Michael, you know what <laughs> I mean? And uh, 
But I've got the gun. And we get out and meet this guy. And he's come up. He looked like something from out of a gangster movie. He must have been watching American gangster movie films. He got out, he's got the, the dark glasses down there, you know. He said, we're going to come on here. We're going to sell Halloween. He said, and uh, we give you... Oh, when did you what? And... Uh, <laughs> hey, that boy, uh... Impersonation was just crazy. How the hell do it again? It's the movie films. You got out, it's got the, the dark glasses down there, you know. He said, We're gonna come on here, we're gonna sell Halloween. He said, Then uh, we give it home. <laughs> hey, it's just the word heroin is crazy. How you said it down there, you know. Every syllable you can hear. He said, We're gonna come on here, we're gonna sell Halloween. He said, Then That's uh, funny. we give it home. You what? And uh, I said, you're not sending that crap on my house. It destroys families. And I'm, I'm passionate about that. I won't have it, you know. And uh, he went, he's opened up his coat. He's pulled out an hatchet. And he went, we chop people up. I went, is that right? Threw back the overcoat, pulled out the sword. I went, I'll blow your... No? Mm -hmm. I went, now behave yourself. Get back to Gerard Street or wherever you come from, so on. I said, but you come here, I'm going to shoot you in the face. I said, you've got where I'm coming from. Allegedly. Allegedly, though. If they come to your manor, I'm going to... I'm sure there's a difference way between the way we operate. Yeah. Look, I, I always say this. Mafia, Cosa Nostra, we can mm. talk about it now, mm. existed in America, yeah. survived and prospered mm. for well over yeah. 100 years. Yeah. I mean, you got to understand, we had mm. tremendous control. Yeah. Number one, we controlled all the unions. Yeah. If you control the unions you in the United States, you, you yeah. control the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we got money. Mm. So they got votes and money, mm. and we were very organized. Mm. Mm. And you can, you can say what you want, but we were part of the history of the United mm. States. That's why you see so much about it. Going back, we're part of history. It was different in, was in, the country, like, in as much as people controlled areas. They weren't organized in the way you're talking about organized crime. Right? They weren't organised that way. They was organised amongst their own selves. We worked separately, but we respected each other. That's how the underworld, or this so-called underworld works. We knew each other, we grew up as kids, so we knew each other on the block, so we only worked with those we knew. You had really every people that was running their own sort of organised crime. But if they come with my manner, and they started like muscling on me, I'm going to shoot them, because that's mine. I don't want a piece of the cake, I want all the cake. That's mine. Talk about it. Right? But I it's your area is what he's saying. Like, why do I have to share anything in my area? <laughs> I'm going to come and steal your cake. Yeah? So that's how it worked then. So we were organised crime in our little areas. But we, if, if we'd all got together, which was what the craze trying to do, but the craze weren't the right people to do it with. The craze, they say, run London. No, they didn't run London. We know who the craze are. We're Twin Ronnie and Reggie were crime figures who ran London's East End. They was every in the East End. They was no different to what we are today. Charlie Richardson, uh, he, in this country, was head of what they called the torture gang. They run South London. And in, in fact, I'd probably say that was the nearest thing we'd come to proper organised crime, was the Richardsons. They were, forget the craze, they weren't on that level. They, they'd like to have been on that level, but. Charlie Richards and that friend, they was earning lots of money. They was doing everything. They had mines in South Africa, working with the government over there. It weren't an organisation like you're talking about. No, it was different with us. We, mm. we controlled major cities. Mm. New York was under mm. our control. Mm. Chicago, New mm. Orleans, Florida, mm. Kansas City. Definitely Chicago. Chicago's heavy, mildly. <laughs> City, Even now, it's Cleveland. Crazy. Uh, we had tremendous control mm. back then, and, and again, because we were mm. very organized yeah. and very disciplined, and a lot of politicians worked with us, yeah. Yeah. you know, so, you know, they were, they were Anyone happy. we'd know? Any politicians we'd know that, Michael? No, 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 we don't go down that route. Yeah. Um, you would know them. Not yeah. Trump. Yeah. Although I knew Trump, I met Trump. Mm. Uh, we had the same lawyer. Roy Cohen was, mm. uh, and, and uh, I had met Donald. Mm. I, I'd be honest, we, we, we did business, mm through the unions because yeah, he was a yeah. builder. He yeah. was a developer yeah, yeah, yeah. and a contractor, yeah. but that's it. Doesn't mean you were a part of organized mm. crime. You're mm. just doing business, no. right? That's just the way it was. That's right. So legitimate people mm. had to deal with mm. us in that regard. Mm. It didn't mean they were part of our mm. life, you know? Mm. So let me ask you this. Yeah. You, think, uh, you think you London guys could have learned from us or what? I think, yes, we could have. Mm. The structure thing, I think you could have learned from us as well 
into... At one point, the Chicago regular gangs were really heavily modeled after the mob. It's just, we started getting it. All the uh, OGs and all the top people started getting locked up. And all of that really fell by the wayside. It's only a few more. It's only like a few. It's only like two gangs, three gangs, maybe tops that are still hyper organized, really, in the city. Like, I would say the Gladden Kings for sure. They're high, they're really organized, but even them, so that even they are getting out of hand a little bit. Um. That's really all I can name, honestly. In the moles, I would say probably some moles. Like, yeah, that's it, really. And 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 the moles is only because of the religious part. You know what I'm saying? But if you like, and <clears throat> you were too close. So when they come for you, bang, they come for the lot. Then when they come for us, we were fragmented. So once one got nicked, we all, whoa. But you were too locked in. You were too locked in. But the, the discipline and the rules, yes, 100%. Yeah, we could have learned a lot from that. And in our world, we had rules, things we could do, things we could Oh, yeah. LA is hot, very organized still. No matter what, no matter who in LA, from whatever to whatever organization out there, they are hyper organized still. Couldn't do like you couldn't shoot a man in front of his wife and kids. You didn't go and shoot women and children. You couldn't shoot the coppers. You couldn't shoot the media because it messed up everyone's business. And that's what people didn't understand about me. It was purely business. I didn't take any pleasure doing it, Michael. Mind you, I didn't mind doing it if, if it meant money. You know, there was things that were tolerated and there's things that were no-go areas. And if you broke them rules, then you, you picked up, you got a, you picked up Absolutely. the price for it. And if you stepped on someone's toes, you know, if they was running a business and you, you muscled in on that, then you'd either have to have a sit down talk or guns was going off. There was respect in a criminal way yeah. there where we respect each other. We know each other's background, so there was no fibs, you couldn't boost it up. You know it. Well, you know what it is. There's consequences. Cool. You know, we understood. We Thank had to. You. We had to. The magic word. We had to. Yeah. You know, follow the rules, yeah. or you had consequences. Yeah. Now, it didn't always go. Mm. You know, mm. you saw things that mm. maybe it shouldn't have been done that way. Yeah, yeah. But for the most, because you're still on the street. Yeah. yeah. But for the most part, you mm. stayed in line because mm. you knew there were consequences mm. if you didn't. When, when we take an oath, yeah. people think we took an oath to lie, steal, mm. cheat, yeah. Yeah. kill, mm. murder. Yeah. That's not what the oath yeah. was about. Yeah. The oath of America respect. means silence. silence. A lot of people don't understand. In our neighborhoods, mm. there was no crime. Yeah. People respected us because mm. we kept everything right. There was same. drugs in the neighborhood, we chased them out. Same, same. You know, or, or worse. Regrets. If you make, oh God, wait. If you make a mistake, your best friend walks you into a room and you don't walk out well. The worst thing you could ever do amongst our lot was to kill an innocent. In other words, so many weren't involved in crime, you know? And, um, and oh, that didn't age well in here. I did. It was a robbery that went I rob remember this from his lab Bible story. They choked on a gaff, on a gag, on their own vomit and died. They, with all the other supposedly shootings or whatever I was supposed to have done and whacking people, right? Allegedly, I've done all these things, but it got to a stage, Michael, where it got ridiculous. I mean, someone caught a cold when I was doing North London. Um, I was the one who gave me it. And I got blamed for a lot of things. I, yeah. I, I know what I've done, and I openly admit what I've done. Look, we have to admit we did some bad things in that yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. One of the horrors of my life, mm, and I mm, don't know if it's the same with mm, you, you make a mistake, your best friend walks you into a room, you don't walk mm, out again. Mm. And obviously in my life, I experienced that, right? A friend of mine, he comes to me, I'm a captain, he was one of my guys. Again, I knew him my whole life. Michael, I got involved in a small drug deal with the boss's son. He said, I'm gonna be in trouble. I said, you've been in this life for 25 years, don't worry about it, we'll straighten it all out. So he was so afraid, I, I was leaving to go to Florida, I was in New York, I had my own plane at that time. I said to him, don't worry about it. When I get back, I'll straighten it all out. Not a problem. He was so much in fear, Bobby, 
the guy goes into a phone booth, calls his wife, mm. says goodbye to her, and blows his brains out in the phone booth because he said, I'm not going to let anybody walk me into a room. I'm mm. not going out that way. So what you said about fear was certainly a major mm. part of that life. And I, I can't tell you. I mean, uh, you watch any ma mafia movie and he, what he's talking about, that walk, everything he talk about is in those movies. Especially a friend walking you into the room, like, like can we have a talk? Like, it's tough. So I've many seen guys a lot of movies. movies just got killed. Hey. Normally, the way things go, a crime is committed, yeah. and the police go out and investigate the crime. That's right. With guys like us, yeah. they investigate us yeah. trying to find the crime. You got it it goes the opposite way. You got it way. in one. You got it in one. You know, the opposite way. So they're trying to build a case mm. against you. You catch me doing it on camera, you catch me doing it. I don't do nothing. Same thing. I used to tell the agents, hey, look, yeah. you're on one side, I'm on the other. That's right. You catch me, yeah. you do your job, you get me, yeah. hey, fine. Hey, Just don't frame me. I was arrested probably 18 times mm. during my time on the street, but mm. I went to trial five times. Mm. Okay, five times I was either dismissed or acquitted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every case was a bad case. Yeah. Every case was a mm. setup. Yeah. They never got me for what I was doing. Yeah. They were making up all this stuff for what I didn't do. And these places like you took, you took a fool, I took a fool for what I didn't do. You know, so when they say, oh, you know, police cases, oh, there's no smoke without fire. I always say to them, magicians make smoke, but there's no fire, you know? I'll tell you what happened in the United States. Mm. When they came out with the racketeering law, mm. the RICO Act, yeah, yeah. it was a mm -hmm. devastating statute. Yeah, yeah. A law that allowed criminals to be convicted with back-to-back -back sentences. All my friend, myself, I had three mm. RICO cases, three. Yeah. But um, what happened is that the fear of guys on the street was mm. transferred to the government because yeah. now you go down on one count, yeah. 20 years. Yeah. No parole. Yeah. You get 20, you're doing 17 and a half. That's right. So what happens, a lot of the guys, yeah. They put them in a room, they yeah. indict them on RICO, yeah. and they say, hey, you got five counts, you're going away for 100 years. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. the kind of time yeah. they were giving yeah. guys. Yeah. I was facing like 300 years. Yeah. So many guys became informants. Yeah. rolled over. Because yeah. they were rats. afraid. Yeah, they were rats. They are afraid to spend the rest yeah. of their life in prison. How much time did you do, buddy? 13 years. 13? Yeah. It's a good stretch. Mm. I did eight. Mm. It's okay. enough. Yeah. Mm. In 1980... One is enough. One year is enough. <laughs> Mm. Fortune magazine wrote a mm. big article. Mm. 50 most powerful and biggest mm. mob bosses mm. in the country. Mm. It was half the magazine, huge yeah. article. Yeah. I was in jail at the yeah. time. And they featured six of us. I was mm. one of the six. Mm. And then they have a chart. Mm. And they, they labeled the 50 of us mm. according to rank and wealth mm. and power, mm. right? Mm. I'm number 18 on the mm. list. Mm. I'm the youngest guy mm. on the list. I was five behind Gotti. Mm. He hadn't been made mm. boss yet. Out of that list of 50, mm. some 30 odd years later, mm. 48 of them are dead. Mm. Number 49 mm. is doing life, mm. and I'm the only one alive mm. and free. That's a very treacherous life to navigate. If you die of old age and you die free, yeah. you've really this accomplished is success. This is what I'm saying. I'm 72 now, Mike, right? And I've so had, am I, I've by had, the way. Are you really? Yes. <laughs> look at that. Hey, 72 look different, way different. He don't look 72. Congratulations. The same to you. When, when's your birthday? 23rd November. I'm a, right. I'm a Sagittarian. I'm older than you, Bobby. <laughs> no, all right. You're I'm, cutting <laughs> ears now, Michael. I'm You're in, cutting I'm ears. in May. May of uh, 51. You're in no, November, November of 51. November 51. Respect your elders now. That's insane. <laughs> the reason I walked away from mm. that life, mm. I call it a bad life, mm. an evil life. Yeah. Now, I'm not calling a guy's evil. No, I was one of them. Yeah, you know, yeah. I just happen to be very yeah. fortunate. But I have not, I don't know any family of any mm. member of that life, mm. including my own, yeah. Now, yeah. not my yeah. wife and yeah. kids, yeah. I spared yeah. them, that hasn't been totally devastated. Mm. Walk away. Yeah, but Mike, I think I've got and to Bobby, go. I tell you, that's I've why got, I left the yeah. life. I've got to go. I, I, I got to tell you, I, I'm, I meet this young girl. Yeah. She's now my wife of yeah. 38 years. Oh, I fall goodness. very much in love with her. Yeah. I want to marry her. I said, am I going to do the same thing to her? Because I had a big bullseye on my back. Yeah. They wouldn't leave me alone. Yeah. I said, I'm going to marry this girl. She's going to be alone for the rest mm. of her mm. life. I got to make a choice. Mm. And that's what caused me to mm. start to get out of the life. That I'll tell you what, that was a blessing for you. 
hundred percent. That was a blessing for you. Sometimes people say, "Do you miss the old life?" And in a way, I say, "Yes." Yeah, some some parts. Oh, of it. God, I miss my old life. <laughs> you gotta see, like, but, but but when you really look at back on it, the consequences of how you living, and and in the shelf life of what was going on, it ain't too long. Tough. Some parts of right. it too. And but I say, would you have it now? No, because as I said, you know, I've got peace now, and that is priceless to me. I walked away from it, and but as you said, the hardest thing, easiest thing is getting into it. Hardest thing is coming out of it. it takes a very special. Well, it was hard to get away. I mean, my my whole mindset yeah, yeah. was so it, it was a struggle. Very hard to get away from any type of street life. That's why you see so many rappers, right being right there on the horizon of getting out of there. And the street light pulling right back in, and now they all doing life tough. But yeah. to leave, oh, you know, so it took, took me years. Yeah. People ask me, you know, Michael, what do you miss about the yeah. life, if anything? And it wasn't the money and no, all of that, no. because anybody can yeah. make money. Yeah. You make money yeah. anyway. Yeah. But it was that brotherhood, That's that right. camaraderie with the but guys. I look at it now, and I tell you, I've got a beautiful life now, Michael. I've got something that money could never buy. I've got peace. Yeah. And I've got this little family and they're beautiful little kids and all and I went out with them and, and it was not just seeing me, I know it sounds crazy Michael, but seeing laughing and running about oh, and, nothing like and I love it. I couldn't do that in my previous life. No. I had to be sitting there like that, I'm wondering, who, is someone coming in to, to whack me? Is someone going to come in and try and take over? The, I never had peace of mind Michael. Yeah. That, How many that, kids that. you have? I've got uh, one daughter alive, one daughter dead. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm getting married, so I've got one, two, three. You get married again? Yeah, yeah. I like wedding <laughs> Congratulations. cake. Congratulations. I like wedding cake, Michael. No, That's I'm, good. I'm so in love. It's, it's untrue. When there's are you getting love. married? A, uh, we're not going to afford it. You know, I ain't got all the, <laughs> I ain't got all the money. I was going to say, if the, I'm in town, I'd, I'd be a pleasure to, to I'll join you I'll tell you what, you Michael, you, you get an invite anyway. Okay. All right? You got an invite anyway. Thank there you. you go. Thank you. And that's the end of God. And the I end of the heart. Salute, man. Salute, man. TLL, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notifications. That was that was pretty. The title is kind of their most violent crimes. We ain't really talk about that like that, but you know, still very interesting. I'm gone.